Okay, got another amp test here. Got this Rockford Fosgate Prime 500. I'm um, going to be putting this in. I'm going to wire this down to 2 ohms. We're going to have some box rise, but I'm going to try to find a frequency that has the lowest box rise and see what this thing will put out. Birth sheet says 648 watts. Uh, it's probably pretty accurate. From what I've seen, these things do rated and then some, so we'll see, uh, see what it actually does in real life. I mean, this is on a bench, so this is a perfect scenario. So um, this is with really good voltage at exactly 2 ohm probably because it's on a dummy load. So we'll see what it does on a real um, capacitive load. So Here's this one handed. Here's the beast. A little tiny thing, 500 R501 X1. Great little amp, actually. So, I'm going to throw this on the AMM1 after I get it installed and see what it puts out for power. Okay, so here we have the specs sheet the R500 X1D, uh, rated at 500 watt at 2 ohm. That's where we're going to wire it down to. And that's with a CEA signal to noise ratio of 80 dB. They rate it at 100 dB. I guess the, I don't know what the difference there is. Uh, this one's probably at rated power. Um, and then if we look down, damping factor is 200 dB. Eh, it's not great, but it's not terrible either. It's, it's right around where most amps are, I guess. Uh, so let's go ahead and put this thing to the test. All right, so I got everything hooked up and uh, got the AMM1 hooked up to the amp. Basically right now what I'm going to do is try to find out which frequency has the lowest impedance rise or lowest box rise. Um, so I'm just going to go through a bunch of frequencies and you'll see you'll see the true impedance show up right there and what frequency it's on. So it's on 41 hertz right now and it's about 4.5 ohms. So I'm going to go through a bunch of different ones and figure out which one is the lowest. That will give us the most power. Okay, hopefully you can hear me all right over this tone. Looks like we're peaking uh, with the lowest box rise at 82 hertz. We're getting a box rise of final load at 2.1 ohms, 2.1, 2.2. So I think that's about as close as we're going to get. It also peaked at 22 hertz, but I don't think these subs would like a full power uh, burst at 22 hertz. So I'm going to do the 82 hertz. Should give out the same power. So. I'm going to go ahead and see what it does. Okay, hopefully you can read that okay. I have to sit in the front seat so I can control the knob. And I don't really have a tripod or anything to set the camera up on. So we're going to play 82 hertz. I'm going to do a roll on the bass knob. There we go, that was up to clipping. 632 watts. All right, here we go, we're gonna give it 82 hertz burst. Six hundred and thirty-six watts. Pretty damn good. Six hundred and thirty-six watts. Um, a little bit shy of the six hundred and forty-eight that they rated at, but again, remember, this is on a bench. This is at a pure 2 ohm load. We were measuring at a 2.1 to 2.2 ohm load. Um, so, and that's capacitive, so it's gonna, you know, might change a little bit here and there. It might go up just a hair. Um, also, they're probably rating this on perfect electrical. We're using the vehicle's electrical. So that, the test I did was with the vehicle running, but uh, voltage is gonna drop a little bit. So, pretty damn close though, 636. It's only rated at 500, so it's still well beyond rated. So. Uh, I'd give this one a thumbs up for as cheap as these amps are. Really, really good amp.